Netflix lets you revel in the good, the bad, and the downright weird, all from the comfort of your living room. It's a great place to binge watch your favorite shows, but it's also a vast repository of fantastic movies, if you know how to find them. Wading through Netflix's recommendations can be a daunting task, so we rounded up some of the best hidden gems on Netflix for your viewing pleasure. Turbo Kid what happens when you roll every post-apocalyptic trope into one movie, mix in absurd violence straight from Quentin Tarantino's dreams, and then add superheroes? Probably something like Turbo Kid, a movie that plays like Mad Max if the production crew could only afford bicycles. Stay with us here. It's got wastelands, a water war, robots, Soylent Green jokes, and an evil Michael Ironside, which everyone knows is the best kind of Michael Ironside. Remember this? All right, we're gonna do it the scan away. I'm gonna suck your brain dry. Imagine that, but with an eye patch and less hair. In the distant future of 1997, a loner kid survives one day at a time in a wasteland, scavenging junk to trade for water. To pass the time, he reads the adventures of Turbo Rider, a superhero with a blaster cannon on his arm. But when he gets on the wrong side of the local warlord, he has to become the hero himself to save his new friend. Don't expect any deep insights into human nature with Turbo Kid. Just enjoy it for what it is. A goofy romp through the imagination of someone who probably grew up wearing out the scan lines on their Robocop laser disc. I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Call him Frodo all you want, but Elijah Wood is working hard to reinvent his image as an actor, and we can totally respect that. From his mannequin obsessed killer in 2012's Maniac to his dirty cop con man in 2016's The Trust, Wood is clearly capable of branching out. In I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore, Wood plays a geeky loner who teams up with a woman in his neighborhood to find the people who robbed her house. Don't let the title bog you down. It's a black comedy in the vein of the Coen brothers Fargo and Burn After Reading, a subtle escalating thriller about two everyday people thrust over their heads into a world of crime where anything can, and does, go wrong. I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore is moody, occasionally hilarious, and surprisingly poignant. I'm not letting you shoot anyone. Anyone. Anyone else. Maki. If you've never watched much Bollywood, it may be hard to tell if Maki is making fun of those films or comfortably nestled at the heart of it all. The absurdity feels intentionally cranked to 11, but then again, there's also a distinct possibility that a song and dance number followed by a rocky training montage for a reincarnated fly is completely normal. Either way, it's totally worth your time to watch. Here's the premise, and it's a doozy. A fly born from the soul of a dead man goes on a revenge rampage against the guy who killed him. It's John Wick crossed with A Bug's Life crossed with, uh, La La Land? Maybe? There's a trippy Ant-Man vibe to the visuals and explosive action sequences, all tied into a death match between a man and, well, a housefly. As far as hidden gems go, this one's like stumbling across a dead unicorn in the woods. It's majestic, and you just don't know what the hell to do with it. Harlock Space Pirate from the outset, you can look at Harlock Space Pirate and expect a rocket-fueled amount of fun. After all, a movie with the gumption to call itself exactly what it is in the title isn't about to bore you with overlong, tedious insights into the internal struggles of being a space pirate. No, you're getting spaceships, laser bombs, robot suits, and, in case you missed it the first time, Space Pirates. Based on a Japanese manga, Harlock Space Pirate was well received on its release in 2013 and even won Best International Animated Feature at the 3D Creative Arts Awards. But the CG spectacle didn't come anywhere close to making back its production budget and ultimately failed to find much of an audience. Does that mean you should steer clear of Harlock? Not even close. If the geek pleasure centers of your brain light up at the thought of a well-made, beautifully animated sci-fi adventure, you'll definitely get a kick out of Harlock Space Pirate. The Beaver Mel Gibson had a rough couple years in the mid-aughts, and although he's now got another Oscar-winning film under his belt, his return to Hollywood didn't come without a few false starts. In 2011, he starred in Jodie Foster's film The Beaver as Walter Black, the CEO of a toy company who has a nervous breakdown, loses his family, and tries to hang himself from a hotel shower curtain. On the edge of death, Black snaps completely and allows his life to be taken over by a beaver puppet. I love you. I'm the only one that really, really loves you. 
It's technically a comedy, but Dark doesn't come close to describing the humor. This is blacker than a coal mine after a cave-in, an intimate portrait of depression and mental illness that flows so seamlessly from Gibson's acting that you can't help but believe he's channeling his own personal experiences. With incredible supporting performances from Jodie Foster, Anton Yelchin, and Jennifer Lawrence, The Beaver is definitely a hidden gem worth watching, if only once. Although, afterward, you may need to watch something a little more lighthearted, like The Human Centipede. Thanks for watching! Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too!